Je vais commencer par une petite anecdote. Taking an interest in the media in general, let's start with an anecdote uh, from the movies, which will serve as a transition. In 2007, an American movie called Junu, you have a young American woman who falls pregnant by accident and wants uh, uh, to have somebody adopt her child. So she goes through the classified ads looking for couples uh, that want a child. And she finds an ad saying suburban couple. And so uh, that, that uh, looking for a child. And so this girl, this girl is concerned about the future of her child. And so for her, uh, the, the, the very fact that these people live in the suburbs is a, a guarantee of stability much better than the financial guarantees that are to be found in other ads. Now, uh, what is the connection, you might ask? Well, in the con conversations we've had with Arnaud, uh, in rather informal talks rather than formal conversations, we found that in France, uh, you didn't find this sort of uh, uh, positive uh, idea about uh, peri-urban life. You have a lot of critical uh, views or sometimes condescending views of uh, peri-urban uh, life in France compared to what you find in America, and we found excerpts from the French media uh, where you had, in a way, a good representation of the way in which uh, peri uh, urban life is uh, perceived by the people in terms of um, social space as well as uh, political space. And so we have a number of uh, newspaper articles where uh, the words peri urban or urban are. Uh, found that was in uh, Le Monde, the French daily newspaper. And we found that in the uh, second half of the 1990s, um, the uh, occurrences of uh, the word peri-urban and urban uh, has uh, increased. And they, they, they was, uh, there were more articles about that. Journalists were concerned about the ethical dimension of uh, uh, the peri-urban and uh, the sort of uh, issues that might be of interest to the general public. So uh, the sort of uh, uh, set up introduce or the sort of uh, uh, the presentation by journalists have decided to uh, turn this peri-urban space into a political or urbanistic uh, issue. Uh, and that is uh, what you found in, in the papers with the way in which the whole uh, peri-urban issue was represented. So we looked at several hundred uh, newspaper articles from uh, 16 uh, newspapers from uh, between 2005 and 2009. In reading these uh, articles, uh, what we find that there's uh, uh, something of a consensus uh, about the fact that it is impossible to arrive at a, a precise definition of the peri-urban. You have a lot of uh, uh, fuzzy definitions or some uh, articles saying that the, the whole concept is impossible to define altogether. And in fact, peri-urban is seen as a broader extension of the cities, the suburbs as well as further out, whereas uh, in geographical terms, the uh, immediate outskirts of the city are distinguished from the uh, further uh, outreaches, the further peri-urban areas. And so uh, this confusion seems to show that the, uh, the, uh, the approaches are very very heterogeneous. Some newspaper articles are concerned with uh, well-known institutional terminologies, such as found in the INSEE Statistics Institute. And then you have some other forms of analysis that go beyond the urban versus rural uh, divide. And uh, about 20% of the articles that we read uh, came up with something, an attempt at a definition of the peri-urban. Usually these definitions are very uh, brief uh, and concise. So uh, there's a reference to the uh, densification, def densification of uh, rural areas, uh, this sort of uh, polarity between 
uh, the urban and the rural areas and the peri-urban being somewhere in between. In, uh, we have tried to come up with a typology of our own, or at least looking at these articles, with four uh, categories. You have articles that come up with a neo-rural crit critique. So this uh, looking at the peri-urban, looking at the countryside, uh, longing uh, for uh, nature, and uh, you, uh, nature is uh, recreated through uh, private gardens. Gardens, and this is looked at with a negative contrast to the city where the air quality is poor, uh, you have noise pollution, and the construction is vertical. So peri-urban is seen as an anti-urban approach or need a rejection of a collective life uh, or a, co a rejection of uh, urbanism or urbanity. Uh, and so there's a rejection of the city uh, in these types of articles looking uh, at the peri-urban uh, life as a, uh, a refuge. And then the second theme, the second type of article is uh, social injustice, looking at uh, the peri-urban fabric as uh, a demonstration of the, the difficulty uh, of housing. Many households simply cannot afford uh, a home in uh, the city, and so they have to move out to the second, third, or fourth ring uh, to get uh, to, uh, to acquire a home. And so this means that uh, uh, the middle classes are made more vulnerable uh, and uh, because of the, 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 the cost not just of housing but also the cost of transportation, the energy costs, and so there's a major social disillusionment uh, because of that. Uh, the lifestyle becomes something of a drag and, uh, and uh, while uh, housing may, may be cheaper, transportation is more expensive. And then the, there's a third typology looking at an uh, unbearable lifestyle uh, and uh, looking that uh, peri uh, urban life becomes an unsustainable uh, uh, burden for the rest of uh, society. You have uh, the uh, the use of concrete and uh, uh, cars being uh, used uh, universally, destroying the environment. And this is, of course, uh, incompatible with the concept of uh, of a society where public uh, public service should be accessible to all. And so this brings about more insecurity, um, poverty, uh, and uh, you have this sort of anarchic uh, urban landscapes, or rather peri-urban landscape, uh, landscapes, and uh, and along with that, uh, the National Front vote uh, being a symbol of uh, disillusionment on the part of populations living in these areas. And then the third, the fourth and final type in this analysis, the issues of uh, governance and regulation. And here the interesting thing is that you have rather forward-looking articles because uh, very often we are told that uh, local authorities uh, are incapable of uh, uh, controlling, as it were, uh, property prices and uh, the, or the use of property or the development of, 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 of land. And so uh, what is advocated is a better coordination between cities, uh, uh, protection of uh, uh, agricultural areas, natural areas, and, uh, and the building of uh, collective uh, housing in uh, peri-urban areas. And we have as many as 26 articles that call for better cooperation between the major players so as to better manage this uh, sort of uh, development of peri-urban space. For the past few years, this uh, uh, representation of the peri-urban in the media has taken a new turn with a, a, a paper published by Telerama on the front cover. You had a provoking uh, title, The uh, Ugly France, La France Moche. And uh, that brought about uh, lots of responses, including by uh, Eric Chauvier, who published a book uh, blaming uh, Telerama for holding this sort of uh, contemptuous uh, discourse on uh, peri-urban. And then Telerama bounced back with a, uh, another report on uh, peri-urban uh, France, entitling this a, a, a dream gone wrong. And all the issues of uh, social uh, destitution and misery is blamed on uh, real estate developers, uh, supermarkets, uh, and the decentralization and uh, 
and all-out capitalism. So if we uh, look at what the journalists from Telerama uh, say, these articles uh, are disturbing because uh, they uh, they disrupt the uh, sort of uh, uh, political correctness of our elites. And in so doing, Telerama uh, really resorts to a stereotypical discourse, which is the one that was uh, found in uh, or, or, or produced in 1994 by a gym counselor in geography of nowhere. I mean, there was nothing new about uh, that. Uh, article, but uh, the, the media have been recycling well-known uh, judgments that were found elsewhere in other social spheres. And so, for instance, uh, well, in the academic sphere, for instance, we can see that uh, uh, there were many uh, experts on the peri-urban architects, uh, urban planners, uh, uh, geographers, uh, politicians who, uh, uh, through uh, the, the press, through the, the printed media, but also through the uh, audio-visual uh, media uh, have uh, spoken out, but this sort of uh, intellectual or academic discourse is uh, very much uh, uh, in line with this sort of anathema on the peri-urban. But again, there's nothing new about that. Uh, the catastrophic representation of the peri-urban seen through the media and also in uh, the uh, the maps of uh, uh, intellectuals. We can see uh, many of uh, the criticism that was leveled at uh, American uh, suburbs, but this was also applicable to uh, Europe. And uh, you may remember what Willem Röpke wrote describing suburbs in 1961, talking beyond supply and demand. He says if the a dweller of a city in America wanted to run away from the big cities to live in the uh, suburbs. They go from uh, the uh, devil from the deep to the deep blue sea, from the out of the firing to the frying pan, uh, where uh, spying on the neighbor is the daily rule. The herb, your human herd, living there uh, has lost all urban, all uh, vital impulse. Uh, on her side, Betty Friedan, the uh, uh, the, the feminist. Uh, polemist, uh, polemicist uh, compares the um, uh, peri-urban areas as a concentration camp for uh, for house for housewives, and uh, indeed, uh, this uh, was found in a number of uh, uh, TV series that uh, pretty much considered this uh, that there's a form of uh, condemnation or rejection of the peri-urban. You may, uh, you may remember uh, Gwynola Wagen and Stéphane de Boutin in an exhibition called uh, Let Them Burn, uh, calling on viewers to burn down uh, suburban areas in a sort of a festive uh, event and the media representation of the sub of the suburbs uh, go uh, back to rather uh, outrageous representations and uh, there's uh, first a an aesthetic rejection of uh, modernization uh, a rejection of conformity but also uh, a rejection of a form of cultural aristocracy but the self same arguments that were used back in the 1940s to uh, condemn the effects of uh, urban vertical gigantism are now used to uh, denounce the peri urban areas seem to be the sort of a fertile ground for debilitating material and a sort of conformity that might lead uh, lead to, to conservatism or indeed the uh, xenophobic or uh, hardline uh, reaction uh, uh, conservatism. And so we would like to return to this fact. I mean, uh, we seem to have a challenge here because, uh, of course, uh, if you just use uh, satire or uh, dramatization or, or, or uh, a catastrophic description, this is not very constructive to lead to uh, a responsible policy. So what you really need to do is uh, to uh, renew the uh, geoethical appreciation of the peri-urban uh, with the new uh, criteria. And of course, you have to uh, resist the temptation of uh, contempt or condescendence. Thank you very much.
Well, thank you, uh, Gérard Billard and Arnaud Brenneteau. Uh, if I may, a quick question. Would you say that uh, this sort of uh, phantasmatic stigmatization, as was found in the press or uh, in television series, does, does this reflect in a distorted way an actual scientific controversy because you established a link between uh, uh, newspaper articles or articles by or academics and then more uh, simplistic views, but do you believe that there's an actual scientific controversy or do you believe that uh, 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 scientists uh, bearing negative judgment on the urban, are they uh, for real or are they also fantasizing? Well, I believe that we have some of our academic colleagues uh, who, for the past few years, have uh, conducted empirical surveys in the urban areas with the populations precisely with the view to uh, qualifying their views and seeing the way in which people who actually live out there, how they experience the, uh, the spatial uh, dimension of their lives, uh, that is, uh, uh, and and how their daily lives are, are uh, can be run. And of course, in the long run, this means that you can qualify uh, this uh, discourse that was inherited from the 1960s, 70s, and 80s, and where uh, it was not really possible to have a more uh, qualified view.